Okay, we're gonna revisit looking at histograms. And uh, when I read through this problem, like always, I want us to start to identify what is the variable in this problem, okay? So the authors of the article, Behavioral Aspects of the Raccoon Mating System, Determinants of Consortship Success, monitored, monitored raccoons in Southern Texas during three mating seasons in an effort to describe mating behavior. 29 female raccoons were observed, and the number of male partners during which the time the female was accepting partners, generally one to four days each year, was recorded for each female. The resulting data were as follows. So we see all these data points. All right, and it says, let's make a histogram for the raccoon data. All right, so let's take a step back. What is the variable in this problem? We can see that our sample, we've got 29 female raccoons. What, what information were we getting from them? Were we taking how much they weighed, what their height was, um, did they like sleeping in the morning or the evening? What was the variable? What does this one represent, this three represent? And if you look at the, the wording here, right, it says it right here, the number of male partners. All right, so our variable for this problem is the number of male partners that these female raccoons had. And the units for this are just the raccoons, right? So this raccoon had th one partner. All right, this one had three partners, two partners. This one was having a good time, four partners that year. All right, so we've got our variable. It's discrete numerical, but we can make a histogram off of that, and that's what we were, we were tasked with. Now, I tend to, when I, when I get data like this, and I've got 29 data points, I'm gonna make a little frequency table. It helps me figure out how I wanna scale my X and Y axes. So I'm gonna make a little frequency table. We talked about frequency tables back in chapter one. I'm gonna make my own right now. So if I make a little frequency table, and again, I could opt for frequency or relative frequency. Um, I don't really want cumulative frequency. It didn't ask me to make a cumulative histogram, just a regular old histogram. So I'm always gonna put my variable here. So number of raccoons, partners. I'll just write number of partners because I'm going to run out of room. Number of partners, part, oops, and I still can't spell. All right, and then we'll put frequency here, okay? In terms of my spread, I can see that the lowest number of partners was one, and the highest number of partners was four. So my spread here goes one, two, three, four. Okay, that sounds good. Now let's start counting up how many of each I had. Um, it looks to me like one is the most common, so I'm actually gonna go the other way. So how many raccoons had four partners? We had one, two, three, so I'll put that for their frequency. How many raccoons had three partners? One, two, and three. And I'm actually gonna make some horizontal lines just so it's clearer for me what's going on. How many raccoons had two partners? So one, two, three, four, five. All right, and then I know this should total out to 29 because if you remember from chapter one, your frequency column should always total out to your sample size. So let's see how many ones I'm expecting to get. If I have 29 observations total, and I've already accounted for three, three and two, I can subtract those from 29 and find out that really, actually, I don't think this was two, right? No, I can't count. One, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. Okay, let's retry this. All right. Um, 
I would have eventually caught my error once I counted all the ones and noticed they didn't count, um, total to 29. That's why I have these little checks in here. It's good to have them. You make mistakes, or I sure do. So 29 minus five minus three minus three. So I think I should have 18 here. So let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep, 18. And that total, and you didn't have to do this, but it's always a good check. Total would have been 29, okay? I've got all of my raccoons accounted for. Now again, just to kind of rehash what we did last chapter, if I wanted to convert these whole numbers to relative frequencies, to percents, I could divide by sample size. So I could divide all of these by 29 and get relative frequencies. If I wanted to accumulate this, this information and find the cumulative frequencies, I could zigzag. I could also find cumulative relative frequencies by zigzagging off of the cumulative frequencies, okay? All right, but for making the histogram, this is all I need, all right? So this first column is your x-axis, right? Because your variable always goes along your x-axis. This second column will be your y-axis because in histograms, we have frequency or relative frequency along that y-axis. So let me start putting this histogram together. And on the x-axis, I'm gonna put my variable. So this is number of male raccoons. Oops, I think I need two C's. I should say number of male raccoon partners. All right, my frequencies it looks like the lowest is three and the highest is 18. So I think I'm gonna go along the y-axis by fives. That seems like a pretty reasonable scaling. Um, in terms of the y-axis label, you could write the word frequency here. You could write number of male partners. I'm just gonna go ahead and write frequency. All right, and then I'm gonna start building my rectangle. So this first one needs to go up to 18. Next one for two partners, there were five. So let me go ahead and put this rectangle up to five. And the last two were both at three. have to but I I always like to so I put the heights here I think it's a nice addition um, as you go through this if, I, if I'm taking a look at my history I'm so far I'm feeling pretty good right I've got my x-axis scaled and labeled I've got my y-axis scaled and labeled I could use a title so I'll do it this is behavioral aspects of the raccoon mating system so you take a stats class, you learn a whole lot about how raccoons mate. 
behavioral aspects of the raccoon, excuse me, mating system. Okay, and that is a great looking histogram that I drew by hand, right? I haven't used my calculator at all. We'll use our calculator in just a little bit, but all this is by hand, okay? In terms of what I can do over on my socks, let's just start keeping track of what I know about my socks. And, and I don't know that much because we haven't gotten to most of this vocab yet. But for right now, on this last S, I definitely know the S, I know the spread, and I know the range. Okay, and I wanna reiterate that when it comes to your midterms or uh, your deep dive questions or your homework, you don't owe me both of these. You only owe me one, pick one. I usually pick the range. But the spread, it looks like the low to high was one to four raccoons. Oops, I keep wanting to put one C in the word raccoon. And the range was three raccoons. Or three partners, if you want. Okay. In a moment, I will show you how to do this on your calculator. Uh, we are going to practice describing our distribution with socks. I can only do the S so far. Like I said, when we get to the end of this chapter and we have all of this vocab under our belt, I will come back and we'll go through all of these together, all of the SOCSs. All right, how many raccoons had two or fewer partners? So if you have two or fewer partners, that means your variable was you had one partner or you had two partners. Right? That's what that means, two or fewer. So if I look at this, right? How many raccoons had one partner? That frequency count was eight. How many raccoons had two partners? That frequency count was, what was it, five? So what is the answer to this question? The cumulative frequency is 23. So 23 raccoons. I'm gonna squeeze the units in here. All right, so bar charts and histograms look extremely similar. Bar charts deal with categorical data, while histograms deal with numerical data. Bar charts may have spaces between the categories on the horizontal, ask, ac, ugh, the horizontal axis, but histograms never have spaces between the bars unless there's no data for that particular value. Let's say there, there was a gap, right? If for some reason we had one, two, three, four, no raccoons had five, but a couple had six, I might have a gap in the data. That would be the only time there was space in the bars, but you can see that these bars are touching. We're back when we were dealing with categorical data and officially bar charts, we had spaces between the rectangles. Um, but in a histogram, we don't have the spaces unless there's a gap. Histograms can also have relative frequency along the y-axis. So for this particular problem, I left it with frequency just because that's what I had crunched. But I also could have changed all of these over to percentages and I could have scaled this from zero to 100% or zero to, I don't know, 20% depending on what it, what it went to. So you have all of those options out there for you. All right, so I'm gonna show you how this all breaks down on your calculator next. Hey guys, let's go ahead and try and make this histogram on our graphing calculators. I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it. Um, the first one is going to be when we have our variable values in L1 and our frequencies in L2. And then the second way is where we just list out all of the raw data in L1. So let's do it, I think, the faster way if you have that frequency table. And when we were doing example three by hand, we did have a frequency table. So let's go put our data into our lists, right? We always start with data entry. So I was looking at the number of male raccoon partners. So that data spread out from one to four. And we also had the frequency count because we had 29 raccoons, 18 of those raccoons had one partner, five had two, and then three on the others. Right? So we've got our data entry. So once you get your data entered, the next thing you want to do is set up your stat plot. Let's see where we left off. So if I'm looking at this, uh, I have one plot on, two plots off. That's great. I only want to make the one plot right now. But if I look at what I've got, I've got, uh, I do have the histogram. That's also good. But I've got L1 against L3. I need to change that to an L2. So let me go in here. Oops, excuse me. Let me go in here. 
and edit that out. So I'm going to change this to L2. So what I'm saying is I want 18, excuse me, I want 1 to show up 18 times. I want 2 to show up 5 times. I want 3 to show up 3 times. Or I want these data values represented these many times, right? These are the frequency counts. So I've got this going on. I've got my stuff set up. So once you get your, uh, your stat plot set up, we're going to hit zoom 9. And if history is going to repeat itself, I'm going to get that little error menu. So let's see, or not error menu, but yep, there it is. It's popping up again. Still don't know why. It's happening a lot more often on my online version than it does in my real, my actual, this, this one. All right, so let me go back to my home screen, and then I will hit zoom 9. All right, now you can see I have some spaces between the bars, and if I scroll back up here, when we did this by hand, I didn't have any spaces between the bars. And again, zoom 9 does the best it can, but it's not perfect. So let's go look at the window that we're using. All right, so I'm going from 1 to 4.5. That's not too bad. My, my data values go from 1 to 4, so maybe I'll just extend this a little, go 0 to 5, so I have some space on each side. But here's the real reason we were seeing those gaps. They were making a rectangle every half a unit, and our data isn't separated by half a unit, it's separated by a whole unit. Right? We went from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, not 1 to 1.5 to 2 to 2.5 to 3 to 3.5. So it's your x scale that's causing the most problems. I'm going to adjust that to 1. And whenever you adjust your scale or, or any part of your window, don't hit zoom 9 because it'll just go back to where we started. Hit graph. So now I have something that looks a little bit more like what I'm seeing over here. I, I mean, I, I love making my graphs look good. I notice it's not quite symmetric. Right? I've got this empty space here, which I should because I had no raccoons with zero partners. I would like there to be a little bit more space over here. So I'm going to change my x max to 6 just for symmetry reasons. You do not have to do this. This is my thing. I like it when things look symmetric. So now I have some space on both sides. If I trace this out, right, I can see 18, 5, 3, and 3. So I'm looking pretty good there. So that's what we got in terms of one way of how to make your histogram on your calculator. And this this method, the one that we just went over, is when you have your values of your variable and their frequency counts. But it took us a little bit of work, if we scroll all the way back up, right? it took a little bit of work to count all of these out to actually find there were 18, 5, 3, 3. And if you have a really large data set, you can imagine you don't, you don't want to do that by hand. So let me show you a different way of making this histogram on your calculator. And what that's going to entail is we're going to put all of these data values into L1. So it's going to take a little bit longer to do the data entry. But on the flip side, I don't have to make this frequency table. All right, so let me go back to my home screen. And since I have more than one list, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of all of them at the same time, or at least clear them all at the same time. So I'm going to hit second and the plus sign. That'll call up my memory menu. And if you look at option four, right, clear all lists. So if I just hit four and hit enter, it's going to clear them all out. And now if we look back in here, it's empty. All right, so with that, you're going to have to give me a moment. i got to enter 29 data points. I'm going to clear this side out because we, we got a lot over there. All right, so here I go. I'm actually, I'll probably clear it out after all the data entry also. Okay, all right. Look at all of that. That's kind of pretty if you take a look at it. It's nice and symmetric. So if I'm going through this, I see that uh, 30 is my first empty cell. That's a good thing because I did have 29 female raccoons. So I think I have my data in there. I hope I didn't make a typo. 
we'll see if I made a typo at the end. If I don't get the correct looking histogram, then I have some kind of data entry typo. All right, so with this, I'm gonna clear the history, done my data entry, it's time to go look at my stat plot. So what you need to adjust here is an L1 versus L2. That was when you had the values of your variable against the frequency count. You still have the values of your variable here, but your frequency count is not L2 anymore. So let me go in, oh, I keep hitting that button. Let me hit second y equals again. Let me go into this stat plot. We wanna change our frequency list. We want every number that I put into L1 to be represented once because I entered all 29 data points. So I need to change this to the number one. And if you look right now, you'll see that flashing A over that, my, my pointer. That means the alpha key is on which also means if the alpha key is on, if I hit one right now, it's gonna give me a Y. Right? And you don't want a Y, you actually want the number one. So if you want to get the alpha key turned off, quite literally hit alpha. And when I hit alpha, you're gonna see the A go away and it's just gonna be a blinking black rectangle. Right? So now it's just the rectangle blinking. And when it's just blinking like that, when I hit this button, it's gonna give me the number one. So your options, if you ever have just the regular blinking rectangle, whatever is printed on the buttons will pop up. If you hit second, you'll see the little up arrow. So if the up arrow is activated, anything that you hit on the buttons will show the blue version. Right? If I hit alpha, now the A is flashing. So when the A is flashing, you know anytime you hit the buttons, you're gonna get the green option. And like I said, I want the number one here, so I'm gonna get to the, the black rectangle when I hit one. Hit enter in there to save it. And as soon as I save it, as soon as I hit enter, you see it just flash back to A. That's all right. So I'll try and hit zoom nine. Pretty sure I know what's gonna happen. Um, there it is. All right, so I think I'll probably just stop trying that and hit zoom nine from this scale or from this, um, this screen. Now again, I've got the same problem, right? I've got the gaps because our X scale, if we go to our window, is 0.5 and I don't I don't want 0.5 so I'm gonna go adjust this if I remember from just a moment ago I think we did 0 to 6 and then I was going by 1 yeah that's looking pretty good so now again as soon as you adjust your window don't hit zoom 9 because it'll go right back to what we had before so I'm gonna hit graph All right, and that's that's looking pretty good there's my histogram right it's looking properly labeled all of that fun stuff. Um, just keep in mind, I, let me scroll down here, that if you were ever going to actually make a graph for me, let's say on your midterm, you wanna make sure you label your x-axis and your variable should always show up on your x-axis. So you see it right here, number of male raccoon partners. When you're making histograms or bar charts, you can either have frequency or relative frequency along that y-axis. So there's the bar chart, excuse me, there's the histogram with the spaces between the bars. There I am after I've adjusted my window properly. And if you scroll down through the key, they'll talk, or, or they'll, uh, I'll talk about how you can make that histogram in the, the method that we just did, where we put every data point, data value in once, and we have our L1s against our ones. Right? And I even mentioned the alpha key here. So it's all written up in the key for you to see. I just wanted to go over it in person, right? We've got our Zoom 9, we've adjusted our window, and then we're good to go. All right, thanks guys, we'll see you in a bit.